You're watching Let the Quran Speak. Rituals and their significance. Is Islam obsessed with rituals? What do some of the rituals mean? What are they intended to develop within individuals? And how does one ensure that one is not simply doing repetitive, meaningless actions, but is actually deriving the necessary benefits from those actions? Now, uh, Brother Shabir, we have rituals for many different things, many different aspects of our life, uh, birth, death, marriage, uh, prayer, uh, many different rituals. Um, maybe we can discuss what is what is the aspect. What is rich? What do rituals accomplish in our lives? Well, rituals help us actually to to focus on on things that would be important. Uh, the, the rituals are not ends in in themselves. Uh, they they do have certain aspects which are are required of, of Muslims. But Muslims need to think beyond the the mere acts that they're performing and think of meaning and significance. Mm -hmm. This is something that was emphasized by Imam al-Ghazali, who, who died in the year 505 of the, of the Hijra. Uh, he noticed that Muslims were becoming engrossed with just simply the rituals, and so he wrote a massive uh, book spanning several volumes called Ihya Ulum al din the revival of uh, religious uh, learning. Uh, and, and, and one of the central features of his book is to th uh, emphasize the meaning and significance of what we do. Mm -hmm. So tell me some of the significance of, of some of the rituals that we have, let's say um, at birth or at death. Well, at, at birth we uh, welcome the child by, for example, giving a, a, a proper name and uh, a suitable name in, in the Islamic tradition may reflect uh, um, or, or be reminiscent of some hero, uh, it could be a prophet of God or uh, some important figure in, in the history of uh, religions. Uh, and uh, we try to give the uh, um, uh, new, newborn uh, baby the opportunity to hear the words of God. So uh, the adhan or the call to prayer which uh, is sounded out beautifully from uh, minarets uh, throughout uh, the Islamic world. Uh, would now be pronounced in the presence of the child. So mm -hmm. the child hears, uh, God is the greatest, God is the greatest, there is no God but God. So I guess it's, it's not just a call to prayer, but a call towards God then. Uh, exactly. For the, for, the, so, for the newborn child. Uh, no. So what, what this uh, does, both the naming and this call to uh, prayer, uh, is that uh, first of all, by giving the child a suitable name, the child is being um, programmed to think about himself or herself in, in this kind of um, uh, good historical light. I am like one of those prophets. I am like one of these uh, figures who have um, contributed uh, a great deal to human civilization over time. And by uh, giving this call to prayer, we're at the same time uh, imbuing the child with a sense of religiosity, a connection uh, with uh, the source of all being. Mm -hmm. Now, w what about death then? Does death do, you know, what does death do? What is the significance of our rituals towards well, death? Well, uh, our, uh, first of all, in, in preparing the person to die, if we notice that the person is really getting there, um, by reciting the Book of God in the presence of this individual, by refusing to talk about uh, too much of worldly affairs, uh, so, uh, so that uh, we, 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 we do not want to uh, focus the attention of the dying person towards the things of this world. We want to focus the attention towards the things of the life hereafter. So our recitations from the Quran uh, are geared towards helping this person to think about God and, and his words. Uh, we, we also ask the person to, uh, or in the presence of the person, we recite uh, the sacred creed of the Islamic faith, declaring that there is no God but God and Muhammad is the messenger of God, so that the person may be prompted to recite that as well. The Muslim wants that he, he or she should uh, leave this world uttering with his or her last breath that there, there is no God but God and that Muhammad is the messenger of God. But that, of course, uh, is a reminder to us that our whole life is to be like this because we, we I mean, in some cases we know that the person is preparing to die. Uh, in, in most cases, the person dies uh, in, in an unexpected manner, uh, perhaps uh, through an accident of some sort. And uh, a believer has to always be prepared to meet that ultimate moment, even if it comes unexpectedly. So one should uh, be continually uh, in uh, uh, the service of God or service of humankind, which indirectly is still service of God, uh, so that uh, in whatever condition death uh, strikes, uh, we are going to meet God 
uh, with that declaration of faith actually not only being said by words, but by deeds as well. Mm -hmm. We've talked about birth and death. We know there are other rituals as well, some of them occurring every day, such as prayer and ablution. We have to perform those uh, five times a day. Um, then there are other rituals that, that, that are during specific times of the year, for example, fasting, and some of them uh, in a lifetime, so for example, the Hajj. Uh, what are these rituals intended to provoke within an individual? Uh, sometimes this is not specified clearly, but a little bit of thought um, uh, shows us what, what they are. For example, if, if one washes before prayer, it, it's, uh, this can um, promote better hygiene. It, it helps us to you know, get rid of uh, bacteria from our hands, for example, or our faces. Uh, at the same time, it, it, we, we see this as a spiritual purification. It's not just simply washing the physical limbs, but uh, purifying the soul of all uh, uh, negative accretions. Uh, somebody may have told a lie, somebody may have looked at something objectionable. By washing the face and the mouth, uh, one is getting rid of all of this from the, the spiritual body. Uh, when one fasts during the month of Ramadan, which uh, comes annually, um, uh, one, one is again purifying the soul. It's, uh, I mean, we're staying away from food and drink. This is the ritual aspect. But uh, the real significance is that uh, this becomes a purification of the soul. Mm -hmm. Now, is it possible for one to gain the benefits of religion without necessarily performing all of these rituals? I mean, some people think, well, these rituals, you know, they don't really mean that much. There's, there's a sort of deeper meaning that I can achieve, and I don't necessarily need the rituals for that. It's hard to imagine how uh, the effects of these actions would be achieved without the actions themselves. Uh, it, it is possible that uh, through some other religious actions, some people may reach uh, a similar kind of spiritual, um, uh, you might say, spiritual high or a, a closeness to God and so on. Um, uh, but uh, these were, I mean, whatever was prescribed by God through his uh, sacred scriptures, these have uh, certain effects. And uh, if one wants the effects, then one has to go through this uh, particular method. Now, at the philosophical level, people may uh, um, arrive at certain understandings about God, about humankind, about hu their own nature. Uh, and so on. Uh, yet uh, the religious rituals help a person to focus in a certain way and brings up, uh, these rituals bring about in, in the human mind uh, a certain connection with God that is hard to imagine uh, without these uh, rituals. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to an individual who is performing these rituals but feels like there's, there's a dis disconnect? Um, so, so perhaps the rituals are meaningless t to the individual or you know, they're just performing them kind of in a, in a routine way without thinking about the actual meaning or reflecting on the meaning? Well, I would say uh, look at the meaning now and think about what you're doing and ask yourself uh, why haven't you gotten something out of it? It's probably because you do not understand uh, what uh, these rituals were meant to do. Uh, the prayer, for example. Think about what you're reciting, learn the meanings, understand your prayer. <laughs> All right, thank you for that, Bidishri. You're welcome. We'll take a break. When we return, we answer questions we receive from you, our viewers.